hasn't there been shit done in science to try to like use CRISPR and some of this gene editing technology to bring back some of these things like the woolly mammoth and the yeah so I work with that company, Colossal. Colossal Biosciences is the tech company that is uh, using gene editing to bring back extinct animals. And they just had a great announcement. Yeah, here you go. This is them? This is them. They're awesome, dude. It's such a cool company. Ben Lamb, the CEO, has become a close personal friend, um, all because I reached out and researched what they were doing and believe in it. It's radical conservation. De-extinction is a radical idea. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I mean, so one big thing that they just announced, you might see it on on their Instagram or maybe on, on I think it was a post by Nat Geo as well. There's only two northern white rhinos left in the world, and they are functionally extinct, meaning they're not coming back. There's no way to reproduce them. They're not there. Until Colossal stepped in and, go, and went, hey, hold my beer, right? And now Colossal is going to go and do the genetic, genomics work to save the northern white rhino. That's pretty incredible, right? to go and take samples from existing animals, build embryos, impregnate them, so on and so forth, and save a species that's down to two individuals. That's pretty big. So what have they actually done? Like to, to well, bring that's back their, more Well, that's them. their big thing right now. So they just announced a few days ago. I oh, actually, okay, okay. I actually haven't been to the facility since that announcement, so I actually okay. need to talk to them and figure out what their methodology is. Mm -hmm. I'm on their conservation advisory board, okay. so I'm talking to them about how to manage the species because mm -hmm. that's my background. So where are these animals going? What impacts are they going to have? How long are they going to be there for? That's kind of the, the work that I'm doing with them is conservation advising. What Colossal's doing with the mammoths is they're taking Indian elephant DNA, which is like, I think it's like 99.6% related to a woolly mammoth. And they are, through their various processes of gene editing, which I'm not going to try and explain <laughs> or pretend to understand, uh, turning that into a long-haired, long-tusked, cold adaptive, here's the process, Whoa. woolly mammoth. You know, and then, I mean, they have these crazy machines. It's a huge company. It's incredible what they're doing. And the reason being, and this is why it's important, is by putting mammoths back in the Arctic tundra, and here's, you know, here are the genes they're editing for and everything else. It's mm. way beyond my comprehension. They do a fantastic job of communicating it. But um, by putting these mammoths back in the environment, it is going to slow down the melting of the permafrost and slow down the release of carbon emissions, which is a huge, huge thing. Look, and also look at that. Look at That's that a cartoon one, mammoth. but look at that thing. It's adorable. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> no, they're they're doing amazing things, and they're they're going to succeed. So I, they want to put them in like Siberia and populate Siberia with the mammoths, and and that will somehow slow the melting of the permafrost. Correct. So, a um, couple things there. So it, it was going to be in like Siberia and Russia, but there's too much conflict in Russia at the moment. Uh, so I think now it's going to it's all going to. This is not happening next week, right? This is a long, slow process to do it properly, and uh, it's going to begin to take place in Alaska. And they are going to be putting these mammoths back. The mammoths do, there's basically four or five processes, but to try and sum it up as concisely as possible, the mammoths break through, you know, when snow falls, and well, you don't because you're from Florida, but you know, when snow, Seen snow once. <laughs> when snow falls, you get like a nice snowpack. Like imagine an igloo, right? Mm -hmm. Eskimos made igloos to stay warm, believe it or not. So right. That's because it creates an insulating layer from the ground. Right. Once you crush that and break it, that insulating layer goes away. That, pulling out trees, because there's too many trees in the Arctic now since mammoths went away. The Arctic used to be more like grasslands. Um, and a few other processes lead to a substantially slower melting of the permafrost, which keeps all the carbon from dead grasses and trees that are trapped under that ice, trapped under that ice. So you have much less carbon emission offset or not offset, but less, much less carbon emission release. Um, so that offsets that, and that slows slows down how much CO2 is going into the atmosphere, which of course slows down the warming uh, within within the uh, the ozone. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so the, basically when it, when it was lush and when there was big trees and stuff, that would heat it up. Correct, yeah. And so most people don't know this, but the Arctic used to be like sub-Saharan Africa, big grasslands. It used to be freezing cold grasslands that were filled with megafauna. But as human beings came over here and settled it, 
these megafauna never seen humans before. They weren't scared of them. And most of that megafauna got driven to extinction. Mm -hmm. So when all that megafauna went away, and this is like big sweeping generalizations, but you can sort of, anybody can do the reading and figure it out. When all that megafauna went away, there was nothing to eat the baby trees and the baby this and that. And so forests spread, like mm. big, big groves of trees spread. And now that makes big trees, lots of sunlight. It made this like warming environment because right. the grasslands went away and made a forest. Now, as those forests get knocked, when you have mammoths there, the mammoths knock down those trees and, and then everything else can graze them and everything else. But with no mammoths, there's nothing to knock down the trees. So when you put the mammoths back, it knocks down the trees, it crushes the insulating ice and snow layer, uh, and it does a few other things that all collectively, and this is all studied, it's all on Colossal's website, it collectively will cool down the Arctic up to six degrees, which is a lot of degrees. Do you know where they found these dead mammoths remains? Uh, all over the place, I think. I mean, a lot in North America, right? Oh yeah, we found uh, yesterday when we were fossil hunting. We found a whole bunch of it. Really? So all the all of the elephant remains, all the pachyderm remains, had to go to the museum. So we found twenty four species yesterday here in Florida in a creek. Okay, and I grabbed you those two. I kept a couple for myself, but um, everything else went to the museum. And part of what we found yesterday, uh, we I found a little piece of ivory like fossilized tusk. Uh, one of my buddies found like a skull cap from a mammoth. We found mandibles from a mammoth. We found teeth from a, like a bunch of mammoth teeth, actually. And all the pachyderm stuff ha went to the museum. So we're trying to give all the stuff we found away. Right. You're allowed to keep those things. But, you know, anything that we thought was scientifically valuable, we gave to the museum mm. yesterday. But anyway, that doesn't really answer your question. But <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Mammoths were, were all over the place. Yeah, no, it's interesting because I just had a, uh, a guy on here who was talking about some of like the, the ancient cataclysms that basically ended the Pleistocene. And uh -huh. he was saying how like some of the biggest uh, megafauna on Earth were in North America. And the reason that they all died instantly was because of some sort of cosmic airburst from a comet impact. Um, there's that, a, I think there's, I mean, he knows more than I do, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of theories on why that happened. But resoundingly, humans had an impact on it. Um, and yeah, in the America, North America during the Pleistocene had more big animals than Africa does today. That's fucking Gi nuts. Giant sloths, armadillos that you would hang, live under their shell, like because they were so big, they'd make like an igloo. Oh uh, huge God. camels, wild horses, like you got there, mammoths, bears. I mean, this thing called a hell pig. Ever heard of a hell pig? No. Oh, that's the scariest thing you've ever seen. Crazy animals. Scarier than a terror bird? Oh, yeah. Look up a hell pig. Like, oh uh, take God. a look at this thing. Um, yeah, look at these things. Whoa, dude. Yeah, and they were. Uh, what the fuck? That's a pig, and it was a carnivorous pig, by the way. Pull up that picture, the the one next to the the life size, the modern pig, like three up. No, that's a cave bear. So that's a wild boar, and you know wild boar today kill people. Like there right. can be problems with wild boar. That's a wild boar size comparison to a hell pig. Like look at that. Jesus. Yeah, bro. that's a scary animal. <laughs>